Hi again. Now that we've created the basic uh, structure for our class inside of um, our game button object here in our library, let's start adding some internal behavior to it. If you happen to have closed the action strip file, you can always reopen it by right-clicking any object that has a class associated with it in the library and select Edit Class. That will reopen it up inside of Flash Pro. So last time we, we finished, we created this trace statement that was confirming that the object had been created. This is inside the constructor, which executes every single time that an object is created inside of Flash. In this case, it was created when we placed the object on, um, on the stage. So when the project ran, there already were three objects created, so it just executed this three times. You notice that the object oscillated. That's because inside of the, inside of the movie clip, I have two frames, one with the button on and one with the button off. Now, typically in a movie clip, we would have put in a stop action in, as a frame label inside of the movie clip, and we could have done that, but instead I want to put that here. Since we're going to be executing the constructor every single time we run this, we can put the stop action inside of that here. So I go ahead and put in the stop action inside the constructor. If I save this and run our project again, you'll see that it stopped oscillating. That's because the actions that are inside of the constructor will execute. In this case, it will stop playback. So there are a couple other things that we want to do here. So one thing is that we have, um, we have a, a label that just has a generic phrase called label. Okay? This is actually a text field. Let's go ahead and take a look at exactly the, con the uh, construction of that so we can see what, the, what it's called. So we take a look. We have a background. And then we have a editable text field. If I open up the properties panel, you'll see that this is a dynamic classic text field with the name button label. So now we can modify this. Uh, we can modify this inside of the class. So let's go back to gamebutton.as. What we can do is I can say stop. So I have that there. So let's go ahead and modify the label of our button. So we'll say this since we're talking about this object. Button label dot text equals click. Let's go ahead and save this and run it and see what we have. All right, great. So we have a button now that has the word click on it. But if you remember, every single class that we create is going to be uh, is going to be executing this uh, uh, this constructor. So if I go back into the dice out dot flaw and I drag out another game button or a third one, or a fourth one, they will all stop oscillating like they were in the previous episode. But now they all say click. That's because we're defining that for the entire class. What we're going to do in the next episode is allow you from, an, from each instance be able to define specifically what you want each one of these classes to do by modifying the button label through what's something that's called a method. And we'll do that in the next episode.